Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 is one of the most visually stunning games of the year. Built on Epic's Unreal Engine 5, the game takes place in an incredibly detailed and strikingly lit world. Or at least that's how the game fares on Xbox Series X, as my colleague John documented in his video from earlier this week. But weaker systems aren't likely to deliver the same genre-defining visual presentation. That's true for Microsoft's Xbox Series S, which has a fraction of the GPU compute of its larger sibling, and that's especially true for Valve's Steam Deck handheld, which is more in line with the last-gen system. So how do these machines, and Asus's ROG Ally, cope with Hellblade 2's visual demands? The Series S version of Hellblade 2 has a few key visual cutbacks relative to its Series X counterpart. The most obvious hit here comes down to reflections. On Series X, we get Unreal's full lumen reflection system, combining a mix of screen space reflections and software ray tracing to accurately portray reflections of the world. It looks pretty good for the most part. Although the SDF-based fallback reflections do look a little bit crude, especially on foliage elements, and skinned objects are represented only in screen space. It's not perfect, but in typical gameplay, when not examining it at point-blank range like I am here, it produces a pleasing result. Series S instead just uses screen space reflections, without Lumen's ray tracing to fall back on. You see quite good looking results when the reflected detail is in screen space, but the technique fails when you try to examine a reflection from steep angles. Water surfaces can look bereft of lighting detail and sometimes have a bit of a matte appearance. We also run into SSR occlusion issues when Senua gets between the camera and the water surface, as we don't have a good reflection method to fall back on. This usually doesn't have a big impact on the visuals, but in some water-filled spots it can produce annoying results. The Series S also features lower resolution volumetric lighting than Series X. You'll notice that the volumetric lighting here is less sharply defined and suffers from additional artifacting on the S. The overall impact of the lighting is much the same, but lighting detail on Series X is obviously more detailed and clean than on the S, and it holds up better in motion. We find other lighting tweaks in some scenes. Hellblade 2 uses software Lumen GI plus virtual shadow maps, so differences in their resolution on Series S should yield slightly different results. Usually the outcomes are very similar at a glance, but flashing back and forth does reveal some subtle tweaks, and occasionally we do find faults in the VSMs that are largely unique to Series S. There are other little tweaks in the mix as well. The Series S doesn't seem to have the same water dripping animation as the X here. Low lying volumetric fog looks a little coarser on the S2. Foliage quality appears to be somewhat reduced on Series S, and sometimes rocks are placed somewhat differently across the two platforms, though I didn't notice the consistent difference that would make me suspect a visual cutback. I also noticed some apparent differences in asset quality. At some viewing distances, Series S appears to have lower resolution textures. I think that this is mostly a side effect of a lower rendering resolution on the Series S though, as when we get right up close to texture surfaces, the apparent detail is similar. The actual textural makeup of the terrain also sometimes slightly differs between the two machines. There are probably a range of other little visual settings tweaks across the two consoles, but I think I've covered the key areas where they diverge. The two consoles do differ considerably in rendering resolution, as you might expect. Both formats enforce heavy letterboxing at all times, but assuming the area beneath those black bars isn't being rendered, the Series S averages around 1536 by 643, and the Series X averages around 2304, by 964. Hellblade 2 is very challenging to pixel count, so it's hard to pull out more precise figures, unfortunately. I suspect both versions of the game are using Epic's TSR here for anti-aliasing, because in motion, the console builds have similar looking artifacts to the PC version with the TSR technique. The game has a very soft final resolve though, in part because of extensive post-processing. 
We have motion blur, depth of field, heavy film grain, and quite intrusive chromatic aberration. The motion blur can be turned off, but puzzlingly, the other post-process effects cannot. Still, you can expect a softer and less coherent image on Series S. Expect to find more little pockets of aliasing and artifacting, like on the specular rich rocks here. Detail overall in the image is quite blurred, to the point where the game almost looks a bit out of focus on a 4K set. Neither console is ideal, but the Series S is obviously less clear. Performance, thankfully, is quite consistent on both consoles. Series S is very close to a locked 30 FPS update in my testing, with only very occasional issues. A dropped frame or brief momentary stutter can pop up every so often, but the game mostly just hugs that 30 FPS line. Series X appears largely the same. A typically locked 30 FPS, only rarely interrupted, so both consoles offer a stable experience. Hellblade 2 doesn't offer a high framerate mode on the consoles, which might bother some players, but given the pace of the game, I wasn't at all bothered. It feels very well tuned to run at 30 FPS on the console platforms, and stepping up to 60 FPS on PC doesn't seem transformative, unlike in some more action-oriented titles. Let's take a look at Valve's popular Linux-based portable, the Steam Deck. I've elected to start out with the game running at 720p output with FSR 3 in performance mode, but we'll talk about upscalers in a few moments. Here we can see that we're just hovering around 30 FPS with a low settings preset, while medium and high bring us down to performance levels that aren't really acceptable. Across a range of scenes, we observe the same pattern. Only low settings will get us anywhere near a stable 30 on a consistent basis, so that's what we need to stick with. Thankfully, low settings seem to include support for software-based Lumen GI, so the basic visual character of the game is preserved. Foliage sees obvious tweaks, but elsewhere the visual presentation looks quite similar for the most part. The most obvious exception comes down to reflections, which lose the SDF-based ray tracing with the lowest settings preset. The medium and high preset enjoy proper lumen-powered reflections here, but with the low preset we have to make do with SSR. If we take a look back at the Xbox Series versions of the game, I think the Series S is actually not too far from what we're seeing here. Most of the visual differences come down to the resolution of the final image and the resolution of the game's lighting effects. Let's move on to upsampling solutions. Native 720p is just not going to be an option for us here, as we can see when we use Epix TSR in its native AA mode. Curiously, there's no option for TSR scaling when outputting the game at 720p, and the dynamic resolution settings don't appear to do anything at all for performance, which suggests the game just won't go below 720p when using TSR for some reason. At higher resolutions, I was able to target a subnative scaling factor, but never below 720p. That leaves us with XCSS and FSR3 to evaluate, which is unfortunate because TSR typically delivers solid results with lower res rendering. XCSS produces decent looking imagery for the most part. The image has a soft look and image detail tends to look a bit unstable, but in broad strokes it looks fine. The image quality difference between its balanced and performance modes isn't that significant, but we do see a useful frame rate bump in the performance mode, so that's likely the better option to stick with for us. Stepping down to ultra performance buys us an extra 2 FPS again, but I think the image quality hit here just goes a little too far for my tastes. Keep in mind that this is XCSS in its lower quality DP4A mode, so ARC cards should deliver better results. So what about FSR3? In still shots, we get a pretty comparable resolve. Actually, it looks marginally more stable here, I'd say. We're just looking at FSR3's image upscaling component, as Hellblade 2 doesn't support FSR3 frame generation. The problem is that in motion, it falls apart more readily than XCSS. You can see the rocks here shimmer a bit more with FSR3, for instance, as we stumble forward. But the bigger issue comes with broad camera movement. FSR3 produces a very shimmery, very unstable image as we rotate the camera here, which can be highly distracting. XCSS, in contrast, doesn't produce any particularly obtrusive aliasing. 
FSR3 and XCSS in performance mode have nearly identical performance here. So I think sticking with XCSS makes a lot of sense. This is XCSS 1.3, so the internal resolution is lower than with FSR, but I still think it's producing substantially better results. Finally, I thought I'd quickly try turning on the variable rate shading, which I didn't enable for the earlier tests. I didn't find any measurable frame time improvement with the technique on, so I decided to forgo it. A lot of the time on PC, it doesn't seem to make much of an impact, and that's definitely true here as well. So with our settings dialed in, how does Hellblade 2 actually run? We're mostly hovering around 30 FPS here, though some sequences, like this chapter 2 fight scene, run consistently in the 20s. Some cutscenes also provoke sub 30 FPS dips, and we do encounter some larger frame time spikes at times as well. In general, it's a playable experience, but not a terribly smooth one. Though I think with this class of hardware, a marginal 30 FPS experience is probably the best we can expect because this is a very demanding game. Beyond performance, I did find the game to be a pleasant enough experience on my deck OLED. Hellblade 2's dark tones are conveyed effectively on the OLED display, and HDR works fine as well. Let's move on to the ROG Ally. Asus's powerful portable should offer a substantially better experience, with its more capable chip and higher wattage operation. Even with a similar TDP level in performance mode though, we can still clock a big advantage over the deck. We're up to about 50% faster here, with some scene-to-scene -scene variation. If we turn the system up in turbo mode, the performance goes up further still, although the gains are more moderate, at about a 10-20% to frame rate uplift in most of my test shots. If we run through a good range of game content here in that turbo mode, we're usually landing in the 40s and 50s. Even in that demanding Chapter 2 fight, we hover around the 40 FPS mark, which is a huge improvement over the deck OLED. Like the deck, we do encounter some frame time spikes in the mix here as well. I did try bumping up the resolution to 900p in turbo mode as well, to better suit the Ally's 1080p panel. The performance dip is pretty moderate and we end up with frame rates that are similar to running the game at 720p in the Ally's performance wattage preset. I did log a pretty short sub 30 FPS dip, but otherwise we're comfortably in the 30s and usually actually in the 40s, which is within the Ally's VRR window with LFC. I've just covered the Ally here, but performance should be in line with other Z1 Extreme, 7840U, and 8840U devices, as they have near identical specifications. So these findings apply to the higher end AMD based PC handhelds on the market. I think the experience on this class of hardware is genuinely pretty decent, with enough speed to run Hellblade 2 serviceably. Hellblade 2 probably isn't going to be to everyone's taste. The game is a very linear, very constrained experience, a far cry from the open world titles that have dominated the games industry as of late. It's built around limited environmental exploration, basic puzzles, and simple but brutal combat. It's well paced and I found the action quite enjoyable, but some players are bound to find the game quite restricted. It's also not a long game, clocking in at maybe a half dozen hours for a full playthrough. But in exchange, Hellblade 2 offers some of the best graphics in gaming today. It's just oozing visual quality from every pore, with absolutely stunning characters, beautiful lighting and well-realized environments. That visual splendor really sells the game experience, and I think it justifies the game's reduced scope. This is the best looking Unreal Engine 5 title on the market in my opinion. Hellblade 2 is a very narrative oriented experience, and the game's portrayal of humans in particular is really second to none, both in facial detail and in expressivity. And Hellblade 2's visual impact is pretty similar across its key platforms. The game heavily relies on software ray tracing on all formats and doesn't seem to scale far above Series X on PC. The Series S also looks quite similar to the Series X, just with the expected cutbacks to resolution and the removal of lumen reflections, which doesn't overly degrade the visuals. Weaker machines, like PC gaming handhelds, are also capable of a solid and good looking experience, though the Steam Deck proves a bridge too far. So I'm pretty happy with the state of the game at the moment and I think a healthy range of systems can achieve enjoyable gameplay. It's definitely a heavy game, 
but given its exceptional visual quality, performance on lower end hardware seems perfectly acceptable. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content and to get in touch use social media. Thanks for watching.